Good morning, class. Um, it's Dr. Balderist. Um, this lecture is going to be about thermotherapy, the theory and application of it. Um, again, you can um, read about this in your Cameron chapter. So we talk about heat versus temperature. Um, heat would be what we would call the total kinetic energy and temperature is a measurement of that heat and um, we do it either in Celsius or in Fahrenheit. Uh, for us the important um, objective of these next couple of videos on both um, thermotherapy and cryotherapy would be to understand the concept of heat transfer and the different mechanisms that allow that um, transfer to happen, whether um, it's just that transfer of heat to and from a patient's body between tissues and fluids, a body, and whether it's going, you know, the wider range of that temperature difference and how that affects the efficacy of um, that modality. So we have five mechanisms that you are going to want to be um, aware of, and they are conduction, convection, conversion, radiation, and evaporation. And we will go into each one of these and explain what they are, and then which modalities um, use this type of heat transfer. And these will be important for you to understand um, for your exam. So conduction is that direct contact. Um, so that would be going from a higher to a lower temperature, generally speaking. Guidelines are increased temperature difference. There'll be an increased rate of heat transfer. So let's say your body temperature is 98.6 and you put a hot pack on there that's somewhere around 125 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the wider the difference in that temperature is, the more heat transfer you're going to get and obviously a more um, therapeutic effect. Also, same would go with a cold pack that's really, really cold. So you have your body temperature that's 98.6 and then you have this cold pack that's probably, oh, you know, 32 degrees. Um, and so there's that difference there as well. Um, so that's one of the guidelines for conduction and that you're actually placing it directly onto um, a surface of the skin. Um, material with a high thermal conductivity um, transfers um, heat faster and you'll find that in your Cameron book, um, the little chart on that. Also the larger the contact area, the more total heat transfer. So you want to think about that when you're picking the size of your hot pack or your cold pack or any other type of um, therapy transfer that you're trying to get that the most bang for your buck um, if that's what you're trying to get is that increase um, transfer of that heat. Um, the rate of temperature rise decreases in proportion to the tissue thickness. So obviously the thicker the tissue um, the quicker that um, temperature decreases. And this is giving you some different examples of modalities um, that are considered conduction heat transfer. And we talked about the hot pack, the cold pack, um, paraffin, and immersion um, therapy. So here's just a couple pictures showing you the different sizes of hot packs, um, different covers that you can have. Um, we'll go over this in lab. On Monday, we'll demonstrate that for you, and we'll talk about how many layers of towels you need, how you do the skin check pre and post. Um, hot packs tend to be the number one thing that therapists and therap physical therapist assistants get sued for um, because of burns, for not checking the skin, not putting enough layers on, not giving them a bell. Um, putting in on areas where there might be decreased sensation. Um, so we'll talk a lot about checking the sensation before you put a hot or a cold pack on somebody, um, doing like a little five minute skin check on them to make sure it's not getting too red that you don't need to add a layer to it. And then the appropriate size of um, the pack that you're doing for the area that you want. And you can tell, even though this seems bigger this sh versus a shoulder one like this that you could use, think about that guideline and that concept of the larger contact area you get, the more heat transfer you get. So with this, she's going to get a little bit more heat transfer than she is with this one. 
Um, here's what the hydrocular looks like and thank you for those of you who cleaned ours out and we have new nice um, and moldy um, hot packs for you to use. Uh, this is paraffin which is a type of wax and you also will do a skill check on this um, and we'll talk about that. Ours is in a metal one so we have to be careful not to put our hands on the side of it. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in lab. Next we have convection. That's where you have some kind of contact with air or water. Uh, you transfer more heat in the same amount of time than conduction. So it's efficient, right? Um, blood circulating in the body transfers the heat by the convection. Um, these examples would be whirlpools, which we really don't use um, very much anymore, and fluid therapy, which hand therapists really do use quite a bit. Um, it has a little bit of uh, it's this kind of cornmeal inside of it, and the next page will show you a picture of that. And so you get air going through with this corn. So you can see the corn here, and it's inside this little um, machine, and then you turn it on, and it just kind of... Um, the air brings around that, that corn so you get the transfer via um, that conversion. And then here's a whirlpool, which um, these really we don't use anymore just because of um, infectious disease control. It's really hard to clean these enough to not um, have somebody get MRSA. And they're um, big and bulky and the cost to fill them up and clean them um, made them counterproductive as, um, but a bigger part of it was just really um, the amount of infections that they get from them regardless of the cleaning that we used to do. So we still have one in the um, lab so you can take a look at it just so you kind of know what it's like. Um, I haven't been to a facility yet where they still use this um, but you never know. You guys let me know if you see one when you're out in your clinicals. Um, conversion is the non-thermal form of energy to heat. Uh, this can be mechanical, electrical, or chemical. So the rate of transfer depends on the power of the energy source, the size of the area being treated, the size of the applicator, and the efficiency of the transmission from the applicator to the patient, and the type of tissue being treated. So we kind of talk about that thickness, and there's also, again, that chart in your Cameron book um, that talks about the different tissues. Um, examples would be ultrasound and we know we have different size applicators for ultrasound and we also will go through that in lab in a couple of weeks. Diathermy, which we're just going to demonstrate that for you. It won't be something that you're going to see very much of, maybe in the skilled nursing facility, but it really isn't utilized that much anymore. Um, and chemical cold packs, which we do have and you will see and you will use. Um, and that's, you know, the chemical in that cold pack that um, allows it to get cold when you whack it. And just before we leave this page, those charts for the specific heat of various materials and the thermal conductivity is on page 125. So it'll go over the um, specific heat of like water, air, the human body, the skin, the muscle, the fat, and the bone for all of these so you can know which ones um, conduct better and what their specific heat is. So just take a look at that chart to help you out. So these are just some pictures. This is one of the ultrasound machines we have um, in the lab. We also have um, some Solaris's, which everyone seems to um, favor, that are both an ultrasound electrical stim machine. So we'll go over those with you in lab and let you see what they're like. Here's that chemical cold compress. You know also that you can get these in um, as heat ones too, where you just shake them, slap them, and then that chemical releases that um, to make it either cold or hot. Here is a diathermy, and it's just showing the different um, types that, of how they can be used. One thing I notice here is they have it directly on the skin. Um, usually you have to have a towel or something to absorb that just because it heats up the sweat, and so you don't want to burn somebody. Um, so you usually do put a little bit of a layer in between them if you're going to um, put it on them without their clothes. So the next type of heat transfer is radiation. That's a direct transfer of energy from material with higher temperature to one with lower temperature. Um, and it's without intervening medium or contact. So we know with conversion, you have a medium like ultrasound gel that you might use. Um, here you don't have any of that type of intervention going on. The rate of the temperature increase depends on the following. Uh, the intensity of the radiation, the relative sizes of the radiation source, um, the area being treated, 
and the distance of the source from the treatment area and the angle of radiation to the tissue. We rarely use these, but the, the examples would be the infrared lights and the ultraviolet radiation. Because these might be on your boards, um, I will have you read these and be accountable for them, but they will not be on this first exam. And so here's a couple examples of that, and there's some dosing that goes along with it. Um, we will be doing some laser though, and that also is um, relative to that, and we will talk about that and just later on, not in today's lecture. And evaporation, that's where the, you know, absorb that energy to change liquid to a gas or a vapor. Um, energy is absorbed in the form of the heat from the material and it decreases in temperature. We have something that we used to use called vapor coolant spray. Um, obviously another example would just be the evaporation of sweat. Um, I will show you pictures of the vapor coolant spray. It had uh, a fluorocarbon in it and I now I'll know I think they've removed that so that you can use it again but I haven't seen it used that frequently in the clinics anymore and it really worked um, to decrease um, trigger points was a big use of it uh, um, one of you if, if you ever know who um, have heard of Janet Travell she did a lot of work on um, injecting trigger points and then people duplicated because they didn't have the um, degree to be able to do those injections, they utilize the vapor coolant kind of as a semi-effective way to help get into those trigger points and loosen them up a little bit. So this is what it looks like now. Um, this is a, a example of somebody who they were working on their upper trap. And so basically they start with the patient sitting relaxed um, they anchor their arm into the muscle, they spray the skin over the muscle, and they go from um, up from about the shoulder all the way up to the oracle of the ear. They spray over that pain pattern. She has these trigger point areas. It's a chart. We have that in the lab so you can look at it if you'd like. Um, you passively stretch the muscle, then you spray over it again. And then you repeat using parallel sweeps and then eventually that um, it's really, really cold and it just tends to um, decrease the muscle spasm in that area. And here's just somebody doing it for somebody's hip flexor muscle. So I think we'll stop there and then we'll continue with thermotherapy in the next lecture. We'll see you in a second.